exclusive. ABS-CBN reveals the reason why Chris Aquino had to transfer to another network. Chris Aquino has recently used her Instagram account to tell the people that she has already decided to leave the ABS-CBN as she signed for a TV project that will be produced by the APT Entertainment. Despite the fact that they're dismayed by Chris' decision, Kane Errol Koa, the head of ABS-CBN Corporate Communications said that they still respect Aquino's decision to leave the network. We thank Chris for the many years that she has been a Capamilia bringing joy, hope, and inspiration to our viewers worldwide. She will always be a Capamilia and we wish her well in her new journey, the statement read. Chris Aquino had been the host of various talk shows on ABS-CBN and was even featured in various series and films. In fact, she was even dubbed as the Queen of Game Shows after she hosted several game shows in ABS-CBN that were entitled The Price is Right, Pilipinas Game KNB, Capamilia Deal or No Deal and Eve the Wheel of Fortune. Invite you to watch the video. Samsung Galaxy Note 7 sets a car on fire after exploding in a man's Jeep in Florida. It did not take long after the accident in Australia, when another Samsung Galaxy Note 7 exploded inside a hotel room. This happened in St. Petersburg, Florida, when the said device exploded inside a Jeep. The owner, Nathan Dornacker, told reporters that he and his family just came home from a yard sale. He was just unloading a desk that he just bought and was putting it inside their house. He left his smartphone charging inside his car which it was still running. To his shock, the car was in flames when he came back. Not the barbecue I wanted on my day off, Dornica wrote on Facebook, sharing photos of his vehicle on fire and the charred remnants of his cell phone. Firemen were able to contain the blaze, which tore through the Dornicker family Jeep. Recently. The cutting-edge smartphone has also been banned from international airlines, following a number of incidents which were believed to be a result of battery issues. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration said it strongly advises passengers to follow its guidance in light of recent incidents and concerns raised by Samsung about its Galaxy Note 7 devices. Cebu Pacific has also banned the device from being checked in. Angry social media users have shared photographs of charged smartphones, complaining the devices burst into flames while charging. Experts believe the Samsung may have to allot $1 billion, following its decision to replace 2.5 million Albanian Lex Note 7 smartphones that have been shipped since it went on sale, according to estimates compiled by Bloomberg. Invite you to watch the video, police officer was severely injured after getting hit by a motorcycle who refused to stop at a checkpoint. Watch. Following the Devo bombing recently, the whole country is in red alert to stand by for any possible threats from the terrorists and drug lords. Though most of the threats received are hoax, PNP still intensifies their security in all parts of the country. They conduct checkpoint in major roads in accordance to the wars waged by the administration. But recently, a police got severely injured after getting hit by a motorcycle he was stopping at one of the checkpoints. Police Senior Inspector Jericho Redden was seen lying down in the middle of the road bloodied. Not very far away from him were the two suspects who admitted that they were racing another motorcycle which caused the incident. According to reports, the driver of the motorcycle was colorblind and at the same time, was driving at 80 kph which should have been less than 60 at least. He also claims that he didn't notice the checkpoint. But police authorities refused to believe his excuse. Meanwhile. Redden is still in the hospital recovering from broken hips and legs. He is still unable to move his lower limbs due to the incident. His wife shared that they are now worrying about the hospital bills. The suspects will be charged with frustrated murder and violation of land transportation and traffic code. Invite you to watch the video, Viral Now, What This Mom Told Her Daughter's Drug Dealer Viaduct Open Letter Will Surely Shock You. Tina Loudon celebrated her daughter's 28th birthday not with lights and parties but with a Facebook post talking to her daughter's drug dealer with a picture of her holding a pink urn which contains her daughter's ashes. Tina's post went viral as it contains her message to the people who supplied heroin to her daughter Ashley, which caused her death three years ago. On the 15th day of August this year is supposed to be the 28th birthday of Ashley and this day also. Tina chose to break her silence about Ashley's unexpected death. To my daughter's drug dealer, 
This is how I spend my daughter's birthday now. How do you live with yourself? Tina posted in her Facebook account quoting from KBSnews.com. The post went viral as it garnered 89k likes and was shared 256,000 times which proved that Loudon's message transcends to many people across the world and made them realize the detrimental effect of drugs and heroin to the youth. Loudon told CBS News that it is the drug dealer's responsibility because what they are selling poison that kills people no matter who they are or what their age is. Loudon also gave emphasis on how each and every family of the victims are getting affected. I feel that drug dealers need to be held somewhat responsible. They know they're selling poison. They know it can kill them, and I wanted her drug dealer to see how my family suffers. The emotional Loudon said. According to Loudon, her daughter started abusing drugs as early as when she is still a teenager and eventually forced herself to consume heroin. Her daughter tried to fight her addiction for five years but because of lack of financial support, she eventually lost her battle and died a month after her 25th birthday. Torture, it's torture, there's an emptiness, Loudon said as she recalled missing her daughter year every year during her birthday. Loudon still hopes that her daughter will inspire many people to continuously fight against this epidemic that is wiping our children out. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention released a report saying that the use of heroin has doubled among young adults from ages 18 to 25 for the last 10 years. In addition, 9 out of 10 heroin users tested positive for using other drugs and among them is Ashley. Drugs do not discriminate. They take the rich and the poor, the good and the bad. It doesn't matter who you are. Loud and powerfully stated. Loudon also recalled how many times she argued with her daughter about whether she is going to pick up Ashley from jail or she will bury her down the ground. Loudon narrated that she hoped for the prison but then it did not end up the way she wanted. You know, I'm either going to visit you in prison or I'm going bury you. Unfortunately, that's not the route we went. Meanwhile, Tina Loudon still continues to give advice to parents like her who are sharing her the same situation. Don't ever give up on them. Don't look down on them, and try to do whatever you can to get them the help they need, Loudon said. Invite you to watch the video, Global Port Pounds Blackwater in High Scoring Tiff, Global Port wants to go out in style, and did. With Joseph Yeo coming off the bench to lead a balanced attack the Batang Pier trumped Blackwater 139-126 Wednesday to end their campaign in the PBA Governor's Cup at the Inner Center in Antipolo City. Yeo finished with 37 points, Mike Glover 34 on top of 18 rebounds and Terrence Romeo 28 markers and 9 assists as Global Port really poured on the heat in the second half of a battle between two teams long out of the running for quarterfinals berths. Their 4-7 slate was a game better than what the Batang Pier wound up with for 12th and last in the Commissioner's Cup, but this one could push them as high as 9th, depending on the outcome of 4-6 rain or shines duel with Star on Friday. Definitely, it is one placing the Mike Romero-owned franchise is all too willing to settle for, considering it started the season in conference at 0-4 and hardly recovered from the spate of injuries that plagued the team. It's just about pride and effort said Cholo Villanueva, an assistant to interim head coach John Del Cardinal, who sat on the team bench but allowed his staff to do most of the work since he has barely recovered from kidney surgery. Whoever has the pride and effort in this type of game will eventually get the win, added Villanueva. The Batang Pier, who made their first ever semi-finals in the Philippine Cup, did come up with a sterling all-around effort and emerged not only with the league's season high in points but also the franchise best. The two teams also combined for the highest single regulation game total since Barranco Bull beat Talk and Text 135-133 in the 2009 Fiesta Conference. After making 56 of 102, or 54 percent, field goal attempts, Global Port also totaled 35 assists, the most ever for the team and for the league this season. Blackwater also put up its highest output ever after making 54 of 112 shots, but could not match Global Port's pace when it mattered most and thus dropped to 1-9. to The elite could avoid falling to the third 12th place finish in six conferences with the league should they prevail over defending champion San Miguel Beer at eliminations and on Sunday. 
Keela King finished with 28 points, double his output when he debuted in an 81-93 loss to Phoenix last week, and also had 15 rebounds. Roy Suman set a new career-high 22 points and Ardella Cruz added 21 markers, 6 steals and 5 assists. But the elite could not find any solution to Yale, Glover and the rest of Globalport in the most crucial stage of the game that was generally free-flowing and featured little defense. It looked like an all-star game because we're both out of the running, said Villanueva. Globalport did buckle down to business when needed. With Romeo, Glover and Yeo at the forefront, the Batang pier methodically pulled away from a 106-105 count, and stretched it to 130-115, still 2.31 to go. King scored 11 of Blackwater's last 13 points, but each time Globalport had an answer to keep the elite at bay. After being held to just 7 points in the first half, Romeo came alive in the third period with 13 of his points as the Batang Pier broke off from the game's sixth and last deadlock at 72 all to lead by nine twice. Bambam Gomalinda, Kyle Pascal and John Pinto each struck for Blackwater, however, bringing the elite back from 88 to 97 to within 97 to 99, going into the last 12 minutes of play. Before the team's established stars took over, some surprises hogged the limelight. Suman already had his career high as early as the first half when he had 18 points, anchored on 3 for 5, three-point shooting, in leading Blackwater to a 70-68 lead at the break. King, Della Cruz and Lastimosa also chipped in at least 10 points each as the elite even posted as much as two 11-point spreads, the last at 45-34. Yale, who went into the game averaging just a little over 8 points, was not to be outdone with 22 of his own, built around a 6-for-9 clip from deep, and helped keep Globalport within striking distance. The supporting cast for the Batang Pier, at least in the first 24 minutes of play, were Glover and Pringle, who combined for 25 points. Thank you for watching videos like you remember, the channel register and comment below. Thank you.